Miami Moose, and there is Matthew Slater, the uh, highly regarded rookie kick returner from UCLA. High spinning kick, it won't carry too deep, and here comes Slater from the six. 15, finds a gap and shoots out to the 27-yard line. Told us last night when we met with Matthews later, you've got to be aggressive to be a good kick returner, and he was there, takes a hard hit, but he gives the Patriots a good field line with the 22-yard kickoff return. Yeah, Matt Castle now, Don. This is this is a big couple of possessions for Matt Castle. Very efficient last week, but didn't score. Didn't get that that ball in the end zone. And the quarterback's job, besides taking care of that football, is getting it in the other guy's goal. Big item to finish drives tonight. Castle with Whitehouse to either side, and they go quickly to the run. And running hard is Lawrence Maroney, and he is out to about the 31-yard line. Gain of about uh, three. Fred Robbins, defensive tackle on the step as we look at the Gillette Fusion starting lineups on the field. Shabar Gaffney gets the start at wide receiver. Starting tight end tonight is David Thomas, Randy Moss on the field, and Matt Light in at left tackle. Yeah, that's a big deal for this Patriot offense, getting Matt Light their regular left tackle, get him some reps. Castle hands off right back to Maroney. Change of uh, direction speed, but Jarris Wilkerson, a very quick outside linebacker, makes the stop for the Giants. As we look now at the Gillette Fusion Giant defensive line, some problems there with the injury to uh, Yuman Yura out uh, for the season. Matthew Ki Matthias Kiwanuka, the former Boston College All-American, is back at defensive end, was playing linebacker, missed uh, much of last year, almost all of it with an injury. He is being counted on heavily now by the Giants to aid their pass rush. Human Euro was good for 13 sacks a season ago and countless quarterback pressures. Throw and a catch and a first down for the Patriots on third and four. Big Kelly Washington is ahead for a seven-yard gain. Nice play, Randy. It really was, and it was a great decision. Time his ball was knocking it away, but that was good, clean defense, I think. It was. Uh, Chris Hansen to punt for the Patriots. R.W. McQuarters to return for the Giants. A high, booming punt. Well hit. McQuarters from the 13-yard line. Looks for a place to go. Gets a couple of blocks, then good special teams coverage by the Patriots. Shut it down inside the Giant 20. 38-yard punt and a 7-yard return. Lead tackler on special teams for New England. The standout rookie linebacker Gerard Mayo. We're back to Giant Stadium. As the uh, Giants now go on offense for the first time, and they, Randy, as you know, uh, failed to score any points with their first team offense in their last preseason game, a 10-7 loss to the Jets. And David Carr getting the start tonight. Eli sitting it out, and Carr actually has been very impressive for the Giants, Don, with with his time, trying to come back mentally from his experience, not only in Houston, but also last year in Carolina. Here come the Giants now as uh, Brandon Jacobs, the big back, gets the carry. Jacobs is quickly taken down by the nose tackle, Wince Wilfork. As we look at the Gillette Fusion uh, Giant offense, Dominic Hickson has made some great plays. Offensive line, a strength of that team, Chris Snee, another of the great linemen from Boston College at guard, son-in-law of the coach, Tom Coughlin. There's no nepotism there, though. Snee is a big-time player. There he is. Now in his fifth year, second and eight from the 22 for the Giants. Hand off. And again, uh, Brandon Jacobs gets the call, and he breaks the Patriot defense for a first down run out across the 40. But there is a penalty marker down, Randy, in the backfield of the Giants. Could negate a 19-yard gain. Here's Jeff Triplett. No. That was a nice job inside by O'Hare and Seibert working on Vince Wolf. So the Giants run for 19 yards and move the ball out just across their 40. Dropping to throw and getting the ball downfield. David Carr gets it out to the near side, and it's incomplete there. Super Bowl MVP, Eli Manning with the night off, and David Carr fighting to make a roster. David Carr's stock goes up against the first-team defense of the Patriots. He leads a sustained drive. 
six-yard touchdown play. Pretty simple philosophy. You're bringing your tight end out. You're giving him a little quick look pass. And now you just want to see who wants to make a tackle, who wants to come up and hit the big guy and stop him. Boy, he is a big guy. You get a lot of, of course, tight end of prime of an open position. Jeremy Shockey didn't want to be here anymore. Here's the Josh Houston hitting the extra point up and good. Shockey, who missed all the playoffs with an injury, is now a New Orleans Saint. But the Giants offense with David Carr at the controls looking sharp on their opening drive of the night. 7-0 New York. Sometimes you need a little push to let in close coverage where you put the ball is sometimes just as important as how quickly you get it there. And Matt Castle did a very nice job of spotting that ball on Kelly Washington. He let it get into him too quick. And as soon as it got into his body, he got handcuffed. And it goes incomplete now. Another booming punt by Hanson. McQuarters will let it hop. It bounces into the end zone for a touchback. So the Giants are ready to go on offense for a second time after their sustained opening drive. It's led them to the Patriot end zone and a 7-0 lead. 4.58 left to go in the first quarter. Giants with the ball and a 7-0 lead. Going on their second uh, possession now. Good play at quarterback from David Carr. Signed as a complete free agent, even though he's the number one pick in the whole draft seven years ago. Well, they forget. They forget pretty fast, Don. <laughs> yeah. When, when they, they think you've demonstrated you can't play, you convince a lot of people. I, I think he's got the raw natural ability, and judging from that first drive, he's got everything. And I think he's the one thing he has to get back is his confidence after being so beaten up while with the Texans. Here's a pitch near side to Ahmad Bradshaw. Another good giant runner in his second year and good defense by Pierre Woods that big line first drive was enough Yeah, the backups are in now. So we'll see how Carr fares. He's gonna have to get rid of it quickly He does puts it on the numbers a completed pass to Steve Smith a small but very quick wide receiver Who is labeled by Rodney Harrison when he catches it? Just an eyelash Smith would have been decapitated by Rodney. Rodney, a fifth starter in his career as a coach, and Rodney Harrison, or play. Now the Giants go back to Ahmad Bradshaw, who was an important guy last year. Seventh round draft choice out of Marshall. Span makes the stop for the Patriots. Well, I don't know if this is what the doctor ordered, but I think it's what Coach Belichick ordered. This is a three and out. It's a quick draw up the middle. They play it extremely well. That entire defense does a nice job. Initially, it looks like they have a wall, but then it's all about the pursuit coming not only from the outside in, but the inside out. Now, Jeff Fiegels, who has been punting seemingly forever, actually only 21 years, right foots the ball for the Giants. C.J. Jones is back for the Patriots from the 20. Return left. Looting tacklers. Almost broke a long one, and then he's taken down at the 28-yard line. Jarris Wilkerson was the lead tackler, a 51-yard punt and an 8-yard return. Getting a lot of work early, his third punt of the night, still in the first quarter, hits the ball, an angled punt directional down to the near side. It caroms out of bounds. Here's the Patriots, Randy, on the way to... And they played as good a football as they played the entire year in September and October last year. Well, what do you make of it? I mean, do you think, I mean, you played on Super Bowl championship teams, three of them with the 49. There's been that many confidence-building drives so far for either side of the ball for New England, and that could be a concern point. Well, here now is uh, David Carr gunning the ball downfield and doing well to hang on as Michael Matthews, a 275-pound tight end. It was popped by Span of the Patriots, but so what? He holds on for a 16-yard gain. That's absolutely, Don. And you talk about the on the sideline right now. Carr, a backup for the Giants. Hands off to Brad. 63 yards. Having a good night. Here's Carr with the ball. Hands off. 
Bradshaw undersized but uh, very quick running back and he pulls him down at about the 45 yard line so that brings up third and 10 here's Carr getting some time running out of it and he goes down back at the 46 yard line of the Patriots all he's got to do is go down and here's Fiegel's hitting the punt downfield CJ Jones is going to let it hop inside the 10 a big bounce into the end zone for a touchback <laughs> So with Gutierrez at quarterback, the Patriots will come out trying to move the ball here early in the second quarter, down seven to nothing. Patriots are not close to points in this game. Giants went on a sustained opening drive after they had stopped the Patriots. They went in on a 24-yard touchdown pass play to Darcy Johnson, their tight end, and now Gutierrez with nowhere to go and trouble coming in the fast rush, throws it away. Yes. Cover it the way they should cover it. That's exactly what Gutierrez should do with the ball is that, that's get rid of it because he's got no one else to dump it to. So he finds himself with a second down and 10 at the 20. Go. Nine-year veteran. Patriots with a wealth of running backs also that uh, that area has to be cut down on Saturday. And I think to carry three or four tight ends if you're going to carry five or six running backs. Well, here's a tough situation. Third and nine for Gutierrez, and he is hitting hard back inside the 15-yard line. As the Giants with constant pressure, that was uh, Dave Tollison, a defensive tackle who broke through. And the problem Gutierrez has is he's got the space to move up. He just doesn't have the time to move up. He gets swallowed by the outside, and it wasn't just one side. That's both sides getting out of after him. So Ronaldo Wynn also coming from the defensive left side, scissored in there with Tolleson. And that puts Chris Hansen on the field yet again to punt from inside his five-yard line. Another tremendous punt, a lot of hang time. McQuarters at his 40. And the Patriots' coverage is at least used to hitting people. And as they say, Randy, it's only holding if you get caught, but it was, he looked like he was clearly held on the way down covering that kick. Yeah, he was merely impeded, Don. Impeded, all right. Now the ball is in and out of the hands of uh, receiver Sonoris Moss. Well, same story for Sonoris Moss. Yep. You've been around. You've been hurt. you got to show what you can do now. He's in his third year out of Miami. Yeah, they've expected a lot and haven't gotten it yet. A lot of injuries, though. Here is a car as it's passed. Slap back. At his height, doesn't have to jump real high to get a face mask full of ball. No, yeah, it looked like he blocked it with his face mask. <laughs> Here's a pitch. Bradshaw, ball on the field and out of bounds. Giant. <laughs> after that game. <laughs> Lamont Jordan in the backfield for the Patriots runs it out to the 20-yard line. Another of that a group of, Brandy, of runners. Yeah. Let's go back to Mike Lynch. Mike. Well, Don, uh, Teddy Bruschi went to the locker room uh, towards the tail end of the first quarter, and uh, he just came back and walked. He's walking fine. Doesn't appear there's anything wrong with him. Uh, didn't bring his helmet back, but 25 straight games for the Patriots. Bruschi is the leader on the team with 176 straight starts. Here is a high kick downfield. Fifth punt. Ball is bobbled by McQuarters. Not straight stars for Brucey, but he is the leader in overall starts, 176. And now the return is out to about the 20, 30, 29 yard line of 57, less than a yard. Power set, double tights. Side set, play fake. Here's Carr, throws and connects. First down and more as the ball is advanced to the hands of Darcy Johnson, who had the touchdown connection earlier. And the Giants drive on inside the 15-yard line. You would think, Randy, that uh, David Carr's probably made this team. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes when you're a hitter and you're aggressive, they can use it against you. Look at Darcy Johnson. That's John Lynch. Kind of overcommits. And he hops back inside. Lynch is ready. He's going to hit him. And Darcy Johnson, players know where Lynch is. And in that example, he knew where he was. First and 10 for the Giants with their 7-0 lead. Almost a botched handoff. 
But Carr does get it in the hands of running back Ahmad Bradshaw. They get plus yards down to the 10. Bradshaw. Of New Jersey, Don Crickey with Randy Cross and Mike Lynch. Giants with a 7 nothing lead. This is the fourth meeting in less than a year. Counting preseason, regular season, and Super Bowl for the Giants and the Patriots. From the bottom on the fourth strand. You had some memorable moments against the Cardinal in your playing days at UCLA. Oh, yeah. I just had to go to a little public school. I couldn't quite qualify for those private institutions. Here's a throw and a catch and down close to the goal line. And in are the Giants as they get the ball to Sonoris Moss. Crossing pattern. David Carr looking like a guy who was the number one pick, albeit seven years ago. And anytime you see a quarterback, especially a quarterback like David Carr, who has been hit a lot, the, the key, easy. Don't pressure him. You want to make him feel comfortable? Don't get in his face. Don't smack him around. And then he can stand there. He can deliver a, a crossing pattern coming underneath like that. You've got to hold the ball a long time to make that pass. Well, he's uh, connected on two catch and run combinations for two touchdowns in this game. All the scoring extra point by Houston is up and no good. Bad doink. The dreaded doink with 210 to play in the first half. But the Giants in command of the game under Tom Coughlin on their home field, 13-0. Look how comfortable he looks. The Patriots defense just is not pressuring him quite enough. Pierre Woods gets in there late. But by that time, the receivers have had enough time to clear things out. And then Moss comes underneath. Well, you're looking for bright spots in the Patriot play. You, you've got to feel, Randy, that... John Lynch on defense is going to be an igniter for this team with the other hitters in there. Well, he really is. I think you're going to have some of the new guys, if you will. You know, Sean Crable, Mayo. Um, you mentioned. Running hard, running well, a straight ahead carry by Lamont Jordan, who's still got some speed. And we're down to the two-minute warning after the 11-yard run by Jordan. Giants lead it 13-0. Mike comes up and off he goes. Now, Gutierrez takes a look, throws a strike. Out to the 49-yard line, first down Patriots. Jonathan Stupar, rookie tight end from Virginia, makes the catch for 11. Last two minutes in, this is a great opportunity to work in one of the big situations of a game. Lamont Jordan finds open room. He's inside the giant 45-yard line. Game plan that year was like time off. Yeah, something happened out there because he something went wrong, and he was glad to leave, and the Patriots were glad to get him. Here's a throw. Almost, it is a pick, and a penalty marker down. Now the ball is picked off by Michael Johnson, one of the Giants' safeties. Hard thrown ball, and Johnson with a terrific play, but let's see what Jeff Triplett says. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a little Ill illegal contact or holding, I believe, against the Giants' defense. Ooh. So the pass interference call is signaled against the offense. And the play goes, and the Giants get back the ball, and with time to move it downfield, maybe get in field goal range or more with 54 seconds left. Oh, that was that, that little shove you saw Stuper make. He just gave him that, gave him the little, the shoulder and the push off. It's hard for that tight end to do, and, you know, Bill Belichick has coached enough defensive players to, to know it's one thing defensive players are always aware of is exactly who is your official probably if there was one thing about offensive players they're not always aware of but uh, you get the feeling he's going to have a lot of them come opening day on September 7th and that is a terrific play by Johnson and they're challenging whether or not that was oh, a catch yes. by Johnson yeah. you see the the right shoulder and right here that push off that back judge just staring at the tight end. Oh, he didn't have the ball. He but didn't Johnson didn't it. catch that. that. That first look right there, the second look we saw. No, that'll be overturned. Really tells you that ball went right to the ground. It was a great look there because you couldn't see it from that other angle. His body it was scooping around. 
Excellent replay look. So uh, Johnson, his celebration will be short-lived. A winner. And an extension. Yeah, a big one. It's amazing Front. what a great deodorant winning is, isn't it? Well, those Super Bowls. If problems are forgotten. You win one of those. Here is a throw up the middle. Coming down with the ball nicely is Chad Jackson. And he works the sideline well and stops out of bounds trying to stop the clock. Well, let's see what they do now. First down from the shotgun. Gutierrez stands in, lobs the ball downfield, taken in very nicely. Ray Ventrone, who's had a lot of good uh, running and catching. And he's checking down, looking down the field. Here comes a big rush again. He goes underneath. This is Lamont Jordan. He's got some room. Heading towards the end zone, out of bounds and stopping. The hey, you get a guy like this that can play this kind of quarterback in a two-minute situation, the heck with covering kicks. Straight ahead, giant stone wallet. David Tollison makes the hit on Lamont Jordan. Plenty of time. Game clock down to 12. Gutierrez, a timing fade pattern, and it's picked off as his receiver fell down. What a nightmare. And on the run is R.W. McQuarters all the way out to the 28-yard line. That was Chad Jackson in the corner. Gutierrez does a, job, does a nice job of calling that play, getting that lob pass up. But Jackson never gets a chance to turn for the ball. Watch. He wasn't knocked down. He wasn't tripped. The turf monster got him. So it ends on an unhappy note this first half for the Patriots on a giant McQuarters interception. And so with the score of the half, the Giants 13 and the Patriots nothing. We invite you to stay tuned for Mike Lynch and the Dunkin' Donuts Halftime Report, which is coming up after these messages. Giants in control on their home field in a preseason rematch of Super Bowl 42. Spinning kick down inside the five-yard line. And the ball is uh, run back by Ware. Danny Ware and penalty markers come flying in. Nice job by Slater acting as a sort of a safety on that left side. Was about the last line of defense. And then, I don't know, how much do you criticize a young kid who's basically trying to grab anything available so the other guy doesn't run it back for a touchdown? See Slater come in from the outside here, 18. And he does get it. Remember, and he held on to it for a good while. Remember, there is no five-yard face mask anymore. No, yeah. no more semi-face mask. No, you either have it and grab it, and it is called, or they're going to leave it alone this year. And that was a good example of grabbing it and staying a hold of it. Any face mask called. On first down, Carr stays in the game, throws a low ball Hopped. that's picked off nicely. Short hop. By Brandon London, but on the one hop. Pass. As we take a look at uh, some of the first half stats. Total yards, Giants uh, with an advantage there. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of those yards coming in that second half, that's end of the second half drive. David Carr, a very effective first half uh, before our eyes, definitely making the giant roster. He would appear to be the backup to Eli Manning come opening day. They don't even have a week, Randy, to get ready. As you know, they play the Redskins here on Thursday night before the mm -hmm. opening uh, sat Sunday for most teams. Well, that's the suddenly you're making those late cuts and actually guys that will practice with you on Friday of this week. And, you know, that won't be on the team. Well, yeah, that's right. It's the final preseason game. It seems like maybe an afterthought to a lot of fans, but for a lot of good young football players. You talk to him, he's got a very clear definition of everything. It's his job, but it's going to be a hectic three or four days for him. Yeah, the final hours for the before the countdown, cut down. Here's the throw in the flat, and the Giants again come up with the ball. Down to the 45-yard line of the Patriots on third and long. They get what they needed. By a, they needed eight, and they got nine. So Carr getting an extended look and an impressive one at quarterback. 
Getting something he rarely got in Houston, that's protection. <laughs> that's right. And really, until Andre Johnson got there, he didn't have much, of an, much in the way of help either when it came to the receivers. But he's getting plenty of everything from his giant teammates tonight. Now he goes with the I formation on first down. Off tackle. And uh, Danny Ware, second year back from Georgia, is taken down by Hobson as the Patriots on defense. Getting a longer look at Victor Hobson, the inside backer. And some backs. There's going to be some cut down there. There's probably four or five guys on the bubble. Carr lets a long ball fly. It overthrows everybody. The receiver was impeded, or did he grab somebody? Back Judge comes running in to make his pronoun pattern, out pattern. Couldn't make the turn. Jeff Schott. Dental, because if he doesn't grab Moss, Moss is gone. And Moss, uh, the thing he does best is run fast. And now penalty markers are down as the Giants run the ball well. Danny Ware. Well, we're getting an extended look. Is there? Do you know how many? Mm -hmm. 105 million. 105 million. Is that something? You're tough to stump here. Hey, there were there were only about 250 million people. Yeah. <laughs> in the country back 25 then. 25 years ago, last edition of Mash in '83. Here's a throw and a catch as uh, Sonoris Moss breaks off the right flank and gets to the 35-yard line. Well, Jonathan Will, David Carr, really uh, feeling, growing in confidence. This is his best night as a Giant. Here's the number one pick in the draft seven years ago, and they got him as a free agent. Downfield throw. He's on target again as the ball is inside the Patriot 20-yard line. Brandon London fighting hard to make the team. He really the is, catch. and he's fighting with Sonoris Moss. And we talk about identifying those final five. The running backs, you'd have to say Green Ellis of that group is probably in, in, in there at the defensive backs. Carr taking a look downfield again. Out pattern on target. And the ball is advanced inside the 15-yard line after the catch by Douglas Robert. 15 of 19 so far. 152 and the two touchdowns that are on the board. So the Giants looking to cut down. Of course, a tremendous their strength of their team last year was the defensive front four, the pass rush, and Michael Strahan retired, a first battled Hall of Famer five years hence. And then Newman Euro was hurt in the preseason, another Pro Bowl defensive end. London gets the ball over the middle, extends towards the goal line. No signal, no touchdown, but he's inside the one. That'll be a first down for the Giants, and nice job by David Carr showing faith in his young receiver. Once he get the ball in his hands. Wasn't pressured, no one in his face, and London gets a chance to make it happen. He was down before that ball had a chance to cross the goal line, though. Mud, it's up tight to the goal line now, and the Giants go on first down over the top, and the Patriots throw it back. Lynch comes. Yeah, not a whole lot of mystery here. The Giants just want to come off the ball and get push. Not only John Lynch, but you had Red. And you had Lynch just kind of adding that extra little pad. For the Patriots, or certainly through three quarters, as the Giants will try again now. Second and goal. Carr with two touchdown throws tonight in deep trouble. And it's an Aaron throw. It had to be because it's one of the reasons I hate that that counts against his so-called rating. Right now with a three tight end power formation, the uh, Giants try to run again. Filling in inside. Field goal try from 20 yards out by Josh Houston is up and good, and the Giants extend to a 16 to nothing lead. So the Giants kick off, and we come back to New Jersey. There, against this Patriots defense, that enabled them to do it. So That's now with David Carr still going at quarterback into the fourth quarter. Handoff, Danny Ware on a slant run is down to the nine or eight yard line. Kenny Smith, defensive lineman, hits, makes the stop for the Patriots. Yeah, Titus Adams is in there at defensive tackle, and you got to think that Kevin O'Connell's thoughts going through his mind, Don, is exactly what you were talking about. Is he ever going to get in? <laughs> I'm going to get there. 
He was warming up. He's next in. All you need is a ball. Next man up, Kevin O'Connell. When the Patriots get the ball, but it might not come until after a possible giant score. Second down, blitz coming. There's Lynch. Good movement by Carr, and he can run fast and gets out of bounds before he takes the hit. John Crable chases him out. Ooh, John Lynch took a hit, too. He went in pursuit off that blitz, and Robert Douglas, the fullback, number 24. Lynch comes off the corner. Carr is able to avoid him. Number 24, Douglas, right there. That is called hunting the guy up and introducing yourself. Ooh. That actually counts as a sack. Yeah. That's a Patriots second sack on David Carr. Quarterback under the rush, ran out of bounds for lost yardage. It counts as a sack for the Patriot defense. Third down and 11. Carr over the middle and Hans uh, will now go to the field goal try. Be a 30 yarder. Josh Houston. We'll try it. Their regular kicker is Lawrence Tynes, who's not playing tonight. Houston puts it up. And well, when you come into Fidelity for guidance, you talk about your goals, review your investments, and then you get a strategy. Right. Yeah. And you get account updates to help keep you on track. Sideline for his chance to quarterback the Patriots tonight. He's going to get it after this kickoff. Giants on the Houston field goal extend to a 19-0 lead. Hey, it's one of those good news, bad news, Don. Again, another one of those examples. The good news is two long drives you held the Giants to field goals. The bad news is they held it for 13 plays yeah. and seven minutes and 18 plays and eight and a half minutes. And in the second half, you've had one three and out. One possession for the Patriots in the second half. And there's 12.57 left to play in the game. Lamont Jordan and C.J. Jones are back, anticipating the kickoff coming now from Josh Houston. <laughs> C.J. Jones. Across the 40. Not done till he's out to midfield. Ball, ball on the field, and Patriots have... Let's see. Yeah, the Patriots do have the loose ball. Those are a nervous three extra yards. 43-yard return. Jeff Pope was the man who made the tackle. It was a nice job by Pope, too, of stripping the ball out. Watch the right hand right here. Yeah, he just strips that thing out and rips it out of the hole. Frees it up, but smartly, they get right on the ball, Dillard. Yeah, Mark Dillard fell on it for the Patriots. Now the rookie, Kevin O'Connell, at quarterback. Third round draft choice. Downfield throw. Line to hook up on a timing pattern, sideline pattern to C.J. Jones a bit behind him. O'Connell, who comes uh, from San Diego State. They were very impressed. A four-year starter for the Aztecs. One year led his team in passing and rushing. Four times he was named a team captain. If you're a throwing quarterback, that usually means you're not getting much protection because yep. you want to throw, but you end up running. Well, he got downfield anyway running when he had to, and now a run up the middle, and the Patriots take it down to the giant 41-yard line. Patriots trying to get off the schneid here and get points up. Down 19-0. Remember where he pointed out the running back situation that, you know, Lawrence Maroney obviously is the, the player that's not really in play when it comes to who are those five guys who are identifying the extra players, but Falk and Morris and Lamont Jordan, a lot of experience. Heath Evans, good lead back, good special teams player. Green Ellis looking for a job, trying to be one of those guys. And O'Connell ready to throw now on third down. And oh, they go to the run, and do they get it? They uh, do a good... Execution by the right side of the offensive line, and the ball goes to Ben Jarvis Green Ellis, the rookie from Ole Miss. Well, nice job by Green Ellis putting that shoulder down and running about two feet off the ground for that seven yard gain. So you come to the edge, and you're going to see attacks from the outside, safeties and whatnot. And as the safety comes in, there comes the shoulder. Nice, aggressive job by Green Ellis. 
Another run by Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. So the uh, Patriots have a Jarvis Green and a Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. Remember, once again, the running back situation. You got to think also, you know, Falk's going to be there. Jordan's going to be there. Morris is going to be there. Evans is going to be there. There's a question spot there. Those are question spots at wide receiver. And as far as defensive backs, all four of those D-backs are in the fight of their lives right now for a roster spot. And it's a very democratic process. Position coaches are heard from. Everybody discusses it. It's almost like the draft. Yeah, and, don't, and don't forget, for a guy like Scott Pioli, Sunday, you go, oh, okay, we've made the cuts. We've got our team. We're looking forward to the Kansas City Chiefs in a week. Well, not so much for the personnel department because the personnel department is going over that waiver wire with a fine-tooth comb trying to see if there's anybody on those other rosters that's been released that can help your football team. Yeah, that's another big factor. Everybody's scouring your roster and who you cut, and they're doing the same to everybody else in the league. Every other, the 31 teams. Noak Bowl makes the stop for the Giants on the run by Green Ellis. Hey, you look out, or you look back on the last three or four years, and you've done all your work in the draft. And sometimes fans are curious when they read about, well, coach so-and-so or this front office guy met with a certain player, had lunch with them before the draft. And they never even get close to drafting the guy. Well, one of the reasons you do something like that is two, three years down the road, maybe the guy gets released. You know something about him. You've got some background. You know he's one of your kind of guys. And when you see him come up on the wire, you grab him. And even with all these players, every player on every team is evaluated by every other team. Here's a throw to the end zone and a touchdown for the Patriots. A beautifully thrown ball by the rookie from 16 yards out. Simply perfect. I mean, if you took a rain barrel, Chad Jackson, and you put it in the corner of the end zone, and you said, all right, O'Connell, drop the ball in the rain barrel. Chad Jackson would have been able to pluck it right out of the top of the rain barrel, would have dropped right into it. So Gostowski comes out after a very nice throw by the rookie, Kevin O'Connell, gets the Patriots their first points of the night, and still with... Uh, a lot of time left, 9.26 left to go. Extra point is up and good. It's an almost a helpless feeling, Don, when a pass is dropped in over the top like that. That's a perfect combination by the receivers and not a thing the DB can do. Sometimes you need a little push to let go of your Mach 3 Razor until you discover Gillette Fusion. It has five blades spaced closer together to reduce pressure with less irritation. Switch to Gillette Fusion, Gillette's most comfortable shave. You see, five's better than three. <laughs> Not in golf. Yeah, but in real sports. Whatever. <laughs> and now this news update from Shaw's. We have more ways to save than anyone. Eyewitnesses report fresh low prices every day on tons of items throughout the store and thousands of exciting weekly specials. But the story gets better with our new price watch. Shaw's watches competitors' prices for you on the items you buy most, saving you time and money. And we offer great values on thousands of exclusive Shaw's store brand products, plus money-saving coupons and other promotions. For more ways to save, Shaw's is the right place to shop. Who says you have to go to a bank to bank? Do you have to go to a dance to dance, a shop to shop, or a circus to see a clown? No, this is America. You can eat Italian without going to Italy. You can be little and still measure up. And with Bank of America, you can check balance information from a desert island matey or transfer money waiting for the scrambler to unscramble, all with a mobile phone. Want to bank when you feel like it, where you feel like it? You can with Bank of America, Bank of Opportunity. Welcome back, Kevin O'Connell, throwing a beautiful touchdown pass. And Josh, Mc, Josh McDaniels has taught this young quarterback well, because if you go back to the very beginning, watch the quarterback. Suddenly the hand signals start, the messages start. It looked like he was checking that play off, giving some instructions. He had identified that one-on-one -on -one matchup, was dropping that, that thing right in there. 
Well, he certainly dropped it right in there. A perfect throw. Chad Jackson on the payoff end, and now Gostowski kicks off. Danny Ware from the three. Patriots hunting the ball and almost knock it out. Well, it's simple. Don't you, didn't you hear Larry Izzo last night, Don? Yeah. Just go get the guy with the ball. That's what he said. The key to good special <laughs> teams play and what's gotten him to three Pro Bowls. I just get the guy with the ball. sales event where you'll find the best values of the year now through September 2nd. Lease the 2008 ES350 for $399 a month for 36 months for $34.99 due at signing. There's no way to hide it. If you drive drunk, we will find you. Cops everywhere are stepping up enforcement and cracking down like never before. Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Sir, have you been drinking this evening? Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Make no mistake. You will get caught, and you will be arrested. Over the limit, under arrest. And we welcome you back to Giant Stadium as uh, Bo Rude... Rookie linebacker from Nebraska was uh, shaken up there and has helped to the sideline. Covering that kickoff. And little injuries, little dings. And if it happens to you, obviously, it's never little. So I'm not going to speak for Bo Rude. But sometimes in the evaluation process, those little late injuries come into play, too, in trying to find out who's going to be on those in those 61 spots. Because you saw earlier this week, you know, Stephen Neal was put on the, the pup, can't come back until after at least week six list. O'Callahan was put on injured reserve. There's all sorts of little play by plays and things that go on during the during the course of these injuries and the ends of the end of these fourth games. The game within the game. Andre Woodson, rookie quarterback from Kentucky, hands off to Ruben Drones. Uh, Andre Woodson was projected during a season last year to possibly a first round draft choice. He went in the sixth round. Earlier this evening, Mike Lynch talked with the Vice President of Player Personnel for the Patriots, Scott Pioli. Mike? All right, joined now by Scott Pioli, who's going to be a very busy guy with very little sleep over the next 24 to 36 hours. You fly home tonight, get back to Foxborough about 2. By Saturday, you got to get from 75 to 53. Take me through the timeline. Well, the next couple of days, we'll get in tomorrow. We'll watch the film. You know, we'll probably get about 3, 4, 5. Yeah, it's 4 hours of sleep tonight. And get into the office, watch the tape, talk about the tape, talk about what injuries we have from previous games, what we have from the training camp, what happened here tonight. And then by by 4 o'clock on Saturday, we have to make 22 player moves. It doesn't necessarily mean we have to cut 22 players, but there's 22 player moves. Then on Sunday by noon, we'll find out which players cleared waivers and which players uh, didn't clear waivers, and we'll have an opportunity then to put eight players on our practice squad. They could be either players that were with us or with other teams that have practice squad eligibility. And of course, Mike, there's a chance that there's a player that's released by another team that's interesting to us that we may add to our 53-man roster. There's a lot to do in a short time. Tell me about this. Is, is this still an audition for a number of guys tonight, and maybe more so than any other years, this final game? I think every opportunity is an audition. I don't know if it's an audition, but every game is an opportunity. Every rep and practice is an opportunity. Every drill, every meeting is an opportunity. And, 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 and I don't mean for that to sound cliche, but it's the truth. These guys are going to get opportunities tonight. These players are going to play a lot tonight. And there's some players we have to figure out where they are and where they are not only today but how they've progressed through a certain amount of time so yeah every rep is important to these guys tonight you've had more injuries than usual particularly in the offensive line does this make some of these decisions more difficult than you've had them in years past i don't think it makes the decisions more difficult again i think what it does is it creates opportunity for other players it's given us an opportunity to see other players put them on the field in real situations against good football players and and to be with other players that they maybe normally wouldn't have been with to run the offense or run 
the defense in different situations. So again, it's it's one of those things you can look at it as being a, a difficult situation or you can see it as opportunity because at some point in time, if these are injuries that, that we've had after the regular season, you have to know who the next player is. So it, it, I see it as an opportunity. Do you think your office feel more pressure when it comes to getting down to 53 or when it comes to round th draft day? Are there any similarities or is it a big difference? There are different kinds of pressure because it, 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 I don't know if this is pressure as much as it is. It's just a tough thing, Mike. You know, you're talking about we're going to make 22 moves by by Saturday. And again, some of them are going to be unfortunately injuries. Some of them are going to be players that we're just moving on from. And these are guys that we've spent a lot of time with. Um, people that we, we, we care about these people care about them as people so to me they're very different things it's a different type of pressure it's an exciting time but it's also a very humbling time when you watch some of these guys that are here tonight unfortunately won't be with us and they know the reality we know the reality so again i wouldn't call it pressure it's just it's, it's a tough situation i know your daughter's up late watching this you want to tell her to get to bed mia i hope you're in bed daddy loves you <laughs> Thanks much. Uh, incidentally, Scott, Mia is wide awake. <laughs> Not missing a play. Hey, just just some some great stuff in that interview. Nice job by Mike Lynch and an excellent job by Scott Pioli of sort of explaining where he's at and what the timeline is of, of what they have to go through over the course of the next 72 hours. It's 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 pretty amazing. And I think the whole idea of the injuries and that, which happens over the last oh, five, six days, really plays into a huge part to what happens Saturday and Sunday. Here's O'Connell with those good feet, making a move up the field and dives down close to the 10-yard line. Very nicely done as he's ahead for a 10-yard gain. that will bring up third and short. Came on a second and 12 play. He's mobile. Let's go back to Mike Lynch. Well, after this play, I have a little, little follow-up uh, just on the interview with Scott Pioli. Let's see what happens here on third and short. Third and short it is. Uh, to the run. Running hard and straight ahead is Green Ellis, the rookie. That'll be a first down. Actually led two college teams in rushing for a season, led Indiana in rushing one year over 1,000 yards, and then went to transferred to Mississippi and led them in rushing. You know, Don and Randy, you think that Scott Pioli has a tough job this year. In the Patriots' first camp in 1960, camp started on July 4th. There were 350 players in camp. Man. 350. That's like six, seven teams. You didn't watch. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't watch film. You just drew lots. <laughs> How'd you cut it? Cut off by twos and cut the twos? Or? Can you imagine that? 350 players? I know it was a new league and everyone was looking for jobs, but my goodness. <laughs> That's unbelievable. And, and they started the camp on 4th of July, by the way, that year. And the first game was September 9th. Yeah, see, we, got, we actually got to pull out a little wider. Okay, now stop. <laughs> That's about the first tryout group right there. <laughs> That's about 300 people. <laughs> That's it. And a lot of them, probably a battle of attrition guys just left the camp that long. Here is O'Connell taking a look at the end zone, and he's going in. Touchdown, Patriots. It ain't over. It's now 19-13 with the extra point coming up and 4.50 left to play. I got to tell you, there's a lot to like about this young kid and very important to show that spit and that fire initially when you get your opportunity. Now the test will come down the line as you see how much he assimilates this offense into his football brain. But I'll tell you what, his I want to make a play brain is working just fine right now. Well, it was a terrific play by O'Connell. He's thrown for run. He's one touchdown. He's now run for one. The extra point is good, and it's all of a sudden a 19-14 to 14 game with 4.50 left to play. Stay tuned. Yeah, this is one of those things, though, Don. You love to see this kind of 
you know, ad-libbing by your quarterback. And make no mistake, the last two times he's run, those were called plays. Those weren't supposed to be passes. They were both supposed to be runs. You'd still like to see your quarterback maybe get down a little quicker. He's two rushes there at the end of that drive from 15 yards and a touchdown. And throwing the ball so far, he's got three. He's three out of four for 22 yards and a touchdown running Josh McDaniel's offense. So in a, what was a very long light night up until now for the Patriots, all of a sudden O'Connell's making it look a lot better. Now the Patriots back up defenders after first covering the kickoff. We'll try to get a stop on the Giants, get the ball back in O'Connell's hands, and who knows, maybe he'll win this game. A lot of conversation going on, a lot of coaching. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's for all three guys. He's not just talking to O'Connell. He's talking to Castle and Gutierrez. The California quarterbacks, all four of the Patriot quarterbacks, hail from the state of California. And here is the kickoff. Giants run it back. Danny Ware almost broke it for a big return, and he's knocked down at about the 29-yard line. On Saturday, September 20th, Patriot fans are invited to honor the greatest players in franchise history with the induction ceremony to the Hall at Patriots Place presented by Raytheon. The induction ceremony is free. It'll begin at 3 p.m. just outside the hall. The Kraft family will be rolling out the red carpet for this event, and nobody rolls it out better. And wait until you see the hall. A sneak preview here, a place that will honor Patriot players past and present. And every fan is invited Saturday, September 20th, the day before the Miami game at Gillette. You know, I tell you, the, the coolest part of that whole thing, and you just saw a quick shot of it with the some of the action going on, those video towers. Everything is phenomenal. Yeah. It's... it's you, you'll see something you'll see, see things in there you won't see anywhere else those video towers to me were very impressive it's taken hall of fames to another level david carr is now back in at quarterback after woodson uh, was completely overwhelmed he was sacked by fafita and really got nothing going when he was in there the rookie andre woodson from kentucky so they go back to david carr to try to finish it out. And the Patriots hitting hard. It's now going to be third down and four from the 36-yard line. News and notes from around the NFL. How about Sean Merriman? He's going to play with that, those torn ligaments in his knee. You hope he can play for a while. I mean, that seems to be a... Well, he's got one more year in his contract. I know that has, that has to come in, come into play. But I tell you, that's, that's something a lot of players around the league are looking at. Obviously, we wake up tomorrow morning, the big football news won't be a preseason game. It'll be Roger Goodell reinstating Pac-Man Jones. Yeah, big Adam play downfield, and is it a first down? It is. The completion is made to Manningham. As David Carr, again, with that uh, those good feet, making plays with his feet, really. He got away from the rush, got the ball downfield on third down for a first down. Pac-Man Jones reinstated today, and he'll start at cornerback for the Cowboys in their opener. That's at Cleveland. As mentioned, uh, Sean Merriman, pass rusher with 39 and a half sacks over the past three years, the most in the NFL over that period. He will play with the knee problem. And Harvey, the last first round pick, comes to terms. Giants run again. Ruben Drones, a veteran runner, carries the ball downfield for 10 and a first down. That third down throw was big by Carr. Play before this, they got him at four new downs, and the clock now down to 228 left to play. Timeout here by the Patriots, Don. And while we have a moment, we'll take a look at tonight's Toyota drive of the game. Kevin O'Connell. Kevin O'Connell bringing a little San Diego Aztec flavor to the New England preseason. Showing why Don mentioned earlier he led him in passing and rushing. He's doing a nice job of rushing that ball tonight. Two for 15 rushing the ball. 
Now with 2.28 left to play, the Giants looking to hold on. They led 19-0. Then O'Connell takes the field, throws for a touchdown, runs for another for the Patriots, and they're back in the game 19-14. They trail the Giants, but they need to get the ball back, and it's first down New York. Ruben Drones. Tough guy. He's taken a lot of hits at a lot of places. Been with the... Broncos and with the Browns and now the Patriots call timeout stopping the clock with 222 left to play well, and that, That's their last that's their final timeout, but there's still one more clock stoppage to come Here at 222 the clock's gonna stop again with the two minute Two minute warning so you got second and eight you stop them here you stop them on third down you can force them to punt you know, inside of, oh, I don't know, about a minute 20 or so. Yeah, that gives you time, but you got to get in the end zone down by five. If the Patriots do get it back, you can see that O'Connell ready to get back out there. A big quarterback, big rangy guy at 6'5", uh, 230 pounds. Second and nine for David Carr and the Giants. Back to the run. Patriots make the stop after a gain of two or three yards. Ruben Drones goes straight ahead. Victor Hobson makes the stop. Game so clock will wind down to the two-minute warning, it appears. Yeah, so it stops here at the two-minute warning. You stop them on third down, and they'll no doubt run the ball, not throw the ball here coming up on third down. You stop them there, and you got a chance to do some, do, do some business, get the ball back. Victor Hobson making his... Uh, Eighth tackle of the night. And a giant player is down. Digger Bunak. So the digger is attended to. Clock is stopped with 2.05 left to play. Tom Coughlin coming out to check him out. From Cincinnati. Cincinnati, the Bearcats have been turning out a lot of good pro players. Yeah, they certainly have. It's uh, it's we talk about parity all the time in the NFL. There's quite a bit of uniformity when it comes to the college football game these days, too. Here's Mike Lynch with tonight's Pepsi close-up. All right, Don, thank you very much. Uh, tonight's Pepsi close-up is a look at a rookie trying to make the squad, Jonathan Wilhite. And one of the fastest and easiest and most secure ways to make an NFL football team, Boy, as is. everybody knows, is special teams. There's a look at him right here, getting knocked out of bounds, but staying <laughs> with the play, just dogging it, dogging it, dogging it. <laughs> they need a net to stop this guy in some of these plays. Jonathan Wilhite, the rookie out of Auburn, looking to make the team, and he is tonight's Pepsi close-up. And a, a very good close-up he's been. Uh, Fourth-round draft choice, Jonathan Wilhite. Yeah, he was impressive. Oh, covering kicks, and now, unfortunately, the uh, cart comes out to help Bunak come off the field. Okay. So Bunak going off to uh, applause from the Giant fans. Some veteran Patriots, they won't be in at uh, parade rest on Sunday, September 7th. They'll be out there as the Chiefs come in. How about the division the Jets play or the, and the Patriots play in, the NFC, AFC Eastern Division? It's Buffalo's probably the most improved team. Miami's looked to, has shown some strength in the preseason. Yeah, they, they rent space in this stadium, too. They just put a little green bunting up when the Jets come in here. <laughs> and, and like that says, that's perfect about the Jets. It's all about Brett. He might have been in something about Mary, but it's all about Brett. Well, Brett Favre is looked down as a guy that can turn the uh, New York Jets around, but he's going to a 4-12 and team from a year ago. There's some other holes that have to be filled. Congratulations to the hundreds of Curry customers who have driven home with incredible clearance savings on their new Hondas. Well, yeah. Giants Stadium, 1914. Giants in the lead. Some of the faithful standing by. You know, Brett Favre, there's a big question in my mind when it comes to the season for the Jets. Here's the guy they traded for and everyone expects. I'd warn you, though, there's, a, there's as good a chance 
that that's the guy you're going to get. And if I'm a defensive back or defensive player, I kind of hope he throws those 29 yeah. interceptions and I'm in his division. 47 interceptions over two years. Yeah, I mean, the last three years, he's had 66 touchdowns and 62 interceptions. He was not scheduled to play tonight down the turnpike in Philly. So not that he didn't want to. I'm sure he would have loved to oh, get no, some yeah, He likes to get out there, but he has picked up the interest. There's no question. Do you think? And they try to get a Favre jersey. <laughs> Third down. David Carr takes a look. They give him time. A throw and a catch and a first down. And that could seal it for the Merriman. The Giants. Mario Manningham makes the catch. Yeah, you talk about how improved some of these teams are in the division. Here's a great example. You know, with Bill Parcells, the tuna down there running the fins, you've got Chad Pennington, so you know there'll be a very efficient football team throwing the ball. No Sean Taylor, I mean, no, no uh, Jason Taylor at defensive end because he's now danced off to Washington. But I agree with you. I think Buffalo's much improved. Well, they are. I also think that Miami's going to be much improved. They've looked at in the preseason. And, and why shouldn't the Jets be much improved? Well, who's not winning? Because I think this football team is as poor as they've looked in the preseason. It's still going to win 13 games. Yeah, I think everywhere around the league they think that, Randy. And there's there's Buffalo with Marshawn Lynch, the defense. But they've only won one of 15 games against these Patriots. Gives us a chance to tell you the executive producer of the New England Patriots preseason television network is Matt Smith. Producer Fran Morrison. Director Mike Frank. We offer our thanks to Dave Mondillo and Bill Waller. To our spotters, Kevin Swindon and Mike Bruno, and to Dave Chorus for stats. And special thanks, too, to Stacey James, Vice President of Media Relations, his staff of Casey O'Connell, Jeff Cornwayer, Scott Barboza, and Tara Bertrand. Special thanks to the Crafts and the great franchise they put together with the Hall of Patriot Place opening up. Thanks to Robert Kraft, Jonathan Kraft, Dan Kraft, all the Crafts, and everybody in Patriot Nation now. The preseason's over. And soon the bell rings. You know, it rings next Sunday. Kansas City Chiefs, Herman Edwards will bring his football team in, and you'll get a large dose of Larry Johnson. And uh, a lot of media attention in large doses, Randy, is going to go to Kevin O'Connell, who came off the bench, engineered uh, two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get the Patriots right back in the game. They couldn't get the stop that was needed to get the ball back in his hands. But now the interesting uh, hours ahead when this team will be cut down. There's David Carr. He has reason to smile. He didn't look like a number one backup. He looked like a front-line NFL starter tonight. Back in a moment. The Giants win the game 19 to 14. Television has been brought to you by Bank of America, the official.